Well, I was right about one thing. This is better than Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Yay? This is the latest interpretation of The Mummy, directed by Alex Kurtzman, stars Tom Cruise, Sophia Boutella, Annabelle Wallace, and Russell Crowe. The overall structure of the plot is very similar to the past Mummy movies we've seen. This movie specifically focuses on the backstory of an Egyptian princess, played by Sophia Boutella, who was supposed to be the sole heir to the throne, but unfortunately she had a baby brother at the last minute and... All responsibilities went to that little rugrat. So she pretty much sells her soul to one of the dark gods, is granted power, kills her father, then kills her infant brother, yay, and then suddenly for her crimes is mummified alive. Cut to thousands and thousands of years later when Tom Cruise, who's playing this mercenary slash looter comes across her tomb along with the scientist played by Annabelle Wallace and just like in some other mummy movies through a few stupid decisions the mummy's resurrected and is causing chaos all over the world. I'm a big fan of the universal monsters as a whole like Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, Creature from the Black Lagoon, and the mummy specifically. The mummy's probably not my favorite of all the monsters but is definitely Probably the more popular one out there, thanks to the three movies from 1999 to 2008, which I like one and a half of those movies. With the exception of Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, those movies were fine as a very fun, cheesy, action-adventure serial type movie. But if Universal was ever going to do a new movie, I wanted it to have a different change in tone. I wanted it to try to go back to more of a horror-esque movie. And this is the first movie in their supposed dark universe, which combines all their other universal monsters. And it's a mess. To be very blunt and straight to the point, this shit's a mess. It's not terrible. It's not 18% on Rotten Tomatoes level bad. It's not that bad of a movie. There's nothing in it that's just so cringeworthingly awful or something that just makes you feel insulted. It's just kind of bland, which is a shame because it definitely has great production values. You can see that watching this movie, there are a lot of good ideas here and there. And Tom Cruise does have charisma, even if he's just playing Tom Cruise once again. Sophia Boutella can't be very creepy as the mummy at points. She works very well, and she continues to prove herself as a very talented actress. And it does have the darker tone that I'm looking for, something that's a little more serious but not downright depressing, you know, outside of the princess killing her infant brother. So what exactly went wrong with this movie? What exactly is making people just turn on this movie and shredding it apart? Well, I can only speak for myself, and from what I've seen, this movie can't really decide what it wants to be. Sometimes it wants to be a typical Tom Cruise action movie. Okay, but your action scenes are actually not that impressive. Outside of one shot where it looks like Tom Cruise and Annabelle Wallace are in zero gravity in an airplane, there's nothing in this movie that really impresses me in terms of your action. Then other times it wants to be more of a horror movie, but your horror elements are actually not that strong. Don't get me wrong, there are some attempts to be creepy, and Sofia Boutella herself can be creepy as the mummy, but they really never take full advantage of these horror elements. These movies originally started as horror movies, uh, with good reason. They creeped you out. The scene in the Boris Karloff movie when the mummy first wakes up, takes his scroll, and walks away, that's really effective and really creepy. So it's trying to be two different types of genres, an action movie and a horror movie, but it's not very good at balancing them out or really blowing us away with each of these aspects. This movie just is kind of uninspired, I'll say that. There are two things in this movie that really bugged me. A couple things in this movie that really don't work at all. The first one is the middle. Obviously, this is supposed to be the first installment of Universal's Dark Universe. So as the movie's going on, after another action scene involving the mummy, once she actually is resurrected to look like Sofia Patella, the movie suddenly comes to a grinding halt when we're fully introduced to Russell Crowe, who plays Dr. Jekyll, and the organization that's supposed to be this universe's equivalent of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's in this sequence that we get a whole shit ton of exposition dumped on us. There are many nods to other monsters, like the creature from the Black Lagoon and Dracula, 
and for a while it even becomes a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde movie in itself. I think from the marketing it's obvious that this movie marketed Russell Crowe as Dr. Jekyll, so I don't think I'm spoiling anything. If I did, then sorry. And given that this is the first movie of a shared universe, it's a little too early to dump all this stuff. Let's take a look at the first Iron Man. It's a very straightforward origin story where Tony Stark becomes Iron Man. No references to Thor, no references to the Hulk, no references to Captain America, no references to the Avengers as a whole until the end of the movie after the credits when we're introduced to Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury. Man of Steel does the exact same thing. As mediocre as I feel that movie is, it was trying to be another origin story for Superman. The only little reference that we got to a larger universe is that a satellite has a Wayne Enterprises logo on it. But it's one of those things where if you blink, you'll miss it. Huh? Or let's look at Legendary's Monsterverse. Let's look at Kong Skull Island specifically. Even though Godzilla was the first one, it was made long before Legendary moved production of Skull Island to Warner Brothers in order to connect Kong and Godzilla. But Kong Skull Island was made with the idea that this was going to be a shared universe with Godzilla, and outside of the beginning of the movie, where we're told about the 1954 attempt to kill Godzilla, there are no other references to Godzilla or any other monsters, again, until the scene at the end of the credits. Even in that scene in the beginning, they never mention Godzilla by name. And the rest of the movie is just a straightforward Kong movie. You don't go into your first movie dumping all of these Easter eggs uh, in an attempt to plan out uh, the rest of your movies, because if this flops, which if all of these box office predictions are correct, it's going to, then you're trapped. What are you going to do after that? So the middle of the movie doesn't work at all. And the last thing that really irritated me, Jake Johnson. Why is Jake Johnson in this movie? Why is he the comic relief? He was one among a couple things that irritated me in Jurassic World. And every time I see Jake Johnson in something, I just cringe. I never think he's funny. He has no charisma. He's not a good actor. I don't know why he's even in this movie. Because most of his attempts at comedy here is screaming at the top of his lungs at Tom Cruise, calling him an idiot. He's not funny. I don't know whose idea it is to put him in these giant blockbusters like The Mummy or Jurassic World. He is just a charisma black hole. I've never seen him in anything where I thought he was funny. For all the shit people give about Brendan Fraser being a terrible actor, that's how I feel about Jake Johnson. He is awful. I really don't have much else to say about this movie. I don't think it's the god-awful abomination that critics are making this out to be, but... I just see this more as wasted potential. Huh? You had a lot of really great ideas here. You had the right tone. The mummy character itself is actually pretty fascinating and sometimes creepy, but this movie's just a giant mess. Huh? It doesn't know if it wants to be an action movie or a horror movie. The middle of the movie is when everything slows down. And I thought that Annabelle Wallace as the scientist was just kind of bland. She's mainly there to dump a bunch of exposition and she's doesn't serve much of a purpose at all. So I can't bring myself to hate this movie. At the same time, I can't say I was disappointed because the trailers really didn't do a good job of selling me. So I'd say watch at your own risk. To be honest, I can't say I was bored watching this movie, and I'm kind of glad that I did see it, but I don't have a desire to watch this again. And if you really feel like you have to see it, it's probably better off watching at home because you don't have to go out of your way to see it. There are good things in it and good ideas. But it's just not all that good. It's kind of sad because I wanted to give this Dark Universe a chance. Uh, because I love these classic Universal monsters. Uh, and I would like this universe to succeed. But with The Mummy being its first one? Mm, not, not on the right track, guys. And that's my review for the 2017 version of The Mummy. So I am done talking about mummies for a while. I forgot to mention this when I reviewed Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, but my next retro series will be Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy in prep for Spider-Man Homecoming. And it'll be my last retro series before I take a much-needed break. So definitely check out my review for the first Spider-Man next Wednesday. And until then, I hope you enjoyed this review. Leave a comment down below and tell me what your thoughts are on The Mummy, if and when you've seen it. And as always, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.